Yo, this is Deontay the Bronze Bum Wilder, heavyweight champion of the world, and you're watching Real Fans Real Talk. Face facts, what up, what up? Real Fans Real Talk.com, where Arthur Domus tricked young and intern Tom. Tom for the Tom. white and black fans, Asia to Manhattan. I get all my facts from my bro, Mark the Stats Man. If you're not tuned in, I recommend the CAT scan. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And if your brain checks out, then you deserve a backhand. <laughs> Sports, gossip, all the hot topics. Hey, hey. Real Fans Real Talk.com got it. Uh -huh. They got the hottest bloggers. Did Jeremy Lynn hurt? We'll log on to the site and you can hear it from them first. Uh -huh. I'm talking about the latest, yeah, I'm talking yeah. about the greatest. Yeah, yeah. Go check out the archive. Even tell a neighbor, tell a Bobby sent ya. From spring to winter, tuning in should be the only thing on your agenda. Certified coach, son, you know what I'm about, son. Real fans, real talk .com. I'm out one. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk .com. Real fans, real talk .com. Uh, Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk .com. Real fans, real talk .com. What's going on? We are back. Another live episode of Real Fans, Real Talk. Oh man, there's so much going down in the world of sports. Oh man, we had, we had a heavyweight fight this week, and the NBA finals are in full effect. And uh, since we was having a little bit of issues with the red carpet uh, a couple of weeks ago, we figured we'd bring the red carpet to us. Right. So we got a couple of uh, movie stars in the building tonight that we're going to uh, talk about some, some new films with a little bit later. But before we get into all of that, let me introduce my co-host, Legend in Two Games. What's up, man? Thursday night. It got is. a lot to get into, man. One champ lost their belt. Another champ is on the ropes. That's true. <laughs> it's, 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 it's getting tense. It's getting real tense, man. But uh, you know what? We ain't going. We 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 got we got a, uh, some uh, new segment that we're gonna have for you guys. That's gonna be strictly for the online followers called Bonus Time, and uh, we went through the Joshua and uh, Ruiz fight on Bonus Time. So y'all get to check that on IGTV or on the YouTube channel. Make sure y'all subscribing YouTube.com forward slash for the fans productions because it will be exclusively for IGTV and for YouTube. For for all of our subscribers, a little extra for you. We talked about that uh, that big knockout, but. What we are going to talk about tonight live on the show is the NBA Finals, man. Toronto uh, is up 2-1. There's a couple of injuries in uh, Golden State that is really affecting the team with Klay Thompson being out. And, uh, of course, you know, already know Kevin Durant is out. Right. Um, did you have the, the, the Raptors up 2-1 at this point? I did not have the Raptors up 2-1. Um, I did think the Raptors would be a tough matchup because of the veterans on their team, and we spoke about that mm -hmm. um, when the Raptors were going back and forth from Milwaukee. Um, I thought with Gasol, with Ibaka, who had played in the finals, Kawhi, Danny Green, all those guys with their experience could be a handful for Golden State. So I think it's the combination of their experience along with the injuries. You talk about KD being out, right? He hasn't played in about four weeks now, five weeks. Mm -hmm. um, Clay out now. He missed yesterday's game. But Kevon Looney was playing big minutes for them, and now he's out. Um, Iguodala is dealing with a little bit of a hamstring issue, so he hasn't really been 100%. Um, and Steph looked sick the other night during game two. So they have really been bitten by the injury bug in the series. Yeah, it's great. And, and, you know, you wouldn't think that Looney would be such a, a major impact, but he's the one that was doing all the rebounding. Right. Because, I mean, Boogie just came back, and he's a shell of himself. You know, uh, he had a he had a good game in uh, in game two, but now you see, you know, in that consecutive, uh, you know, games short rest, yeah, yeah short rest. He's, he's he's not doing too well. He he looked horrible in, uh, in in game three, and then of course you got the rest of those guys. I mean, Kawhi, you know, he played a great game again, and uh, we actually had a Kyle Lowry uh, sighting, which I was very proud of for well, his sake. Right, with Kyle, you know, we get good game, bad game. So it was yeah. we got the good game, and and if you're rooting for Toronto, Wait, you got to. What was the other good game? Uh, well, game one, he played solid. He played <laughs> solid. solid. Well, this is a good game. Right. This is the <laughs> thing with, with Kyle Lowry. He's always struggled in the playoffs. I mean, th yeah. that's one of the biggest bugaboos for Toronto and their, and their lack of being able to advance deep into the playoffs mm -hmm. or deeper than they would like anyway. Yes. But after game one against Milwaukee and game one against Milwaukee, he actually played well there when Kawhi struggled a little bit. Yeah. From that point on, he was pretty consistent. And that's why they were able to take care of Milwaukee in six games. Um, game two was a bad game for him. But game one, he was solid. Yesterday was a really good night for him. They need him to be big, though. Mm -hmm. he's, he's one of their primary ball handlers. He's one of the guys who initiates their offense. They need him to be big. Um, in regards to Kevon Looney, we talked about it. Boogie isn't quite ready yet. 
The yeah. legs aren't under him yet. So to ask him to play more than 15, 20 minutes a night, you're really stretching it with him. And it's showing now because now they got to go deep into the bench and Andrew Bogut's get more minutes. And Andrew Bogut ain't played in the first three rounds of the playoffs. Yeah. And now they got to rely on him. So they, have to, they, don't, they don't have any other options. And, I mean, it's not even like the Andrew Bogut that, you know, they went to the finals with the first time they, they, they made right. their run. This is, you know, injuries and right. years, you know, going past with, uh, with, with Andrew Bogut. So you know it, 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 it sucks for them, but actually I want to I want to get to uh, the fan mail question. Right. Uh, Richard from Queens, Queens wrote in. Do you feel sorry for the Warriors that they have to deal with the losses of uh, Kevin Durant and uh, Clay Thompson right now? Uh, first of all, you never feel sorry for any team in the finals. Unless um, it's yours. Uh, I mean, <laughs> it, it, I mean, yeah, you could be upset, but you should never feel bad. You got to this point because you had a good team. Yeah. Um. You know, did I feel bad last year when Chris Paul was out in Game Six and Game Seven against Houston? Absolutely not. Know. Right. Uh. Did the Warriors feel bad when they had to play LeBron the first year without Kyrie and Kevin Love? No. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. <laughs> so you got to overcome those injuries. And if they do it, remember they only down two one. If they do it, that makes the story even greater for them to know that they overcame those obstacles. Yeah. If they don't. You could cry about it, but Toronto will be champs, and nobody will really care that you didn't have your full squad. No, that's a that's a fact. Um, yeah, I, I agree with you. I don't I don't feel sorry at all. I just I think it's uh, it's a little ironic though that they're now dealing with what they've been the beneficiary of uh, for so long. Because I mean, there's been so many series where you know they played against teams that haven't had their best player mm -hmm. or one of their their best players from the first championship run. Uh, I mean, they had they had they had Portland without uh, Nurkic. In, the, in that first round, and then later again, you had the finals without Kevin Love mm -hmm. and uh, and Kyrie. You know, you had the the Chris Paul year last right. year where he was gone. Right. You had Nurkic was gone again. You know, what I'm saying this year when they played Portland, I don't know if he would have made a big difference. But right. and, and of course, the other big one was Kawhi. He goes down in the Western Conference Finals. So they've been on the on the receiving end of these. I mean, yeah, they, they've caught they've caught a lot of breaks, just like most teams who win championships do. Um, but ultimately, like I said, I don't feel bad for them. You know, they've got a really good team. Yeah. And, you know, the, the unfortunate part is that the injuries came so quickly. Mm -hmm. All these injuries are, are just piling on top of each other now because we knew Durant yeah. was going to miss some games. But with Clay and Kevon Looney pretty much getting hurt in the same game, just as Boogie's trying to get his rhythm to come back. Um, so we don't get to see what this team could look like uh, as a whole, as a, as a total package. But you can't feel bad for them. It is what it is. You, you play deep into the playoffs and these things are going to happen. You know, I mean, even the years when go further back, LeBron with Miami, there were times that D Wade wasn't completely healthy in the playoffs. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They, you yeah. got to fight through it. There were times Boston with their big three, KG wasn't healthy. You yeah. got to fight through it. So Golden State, you got to fight through it. I don't think they have enough left to to fight through it. I mean, we probably saw a career game from Steph Curry, and it still wasn't enough. So I don't think they have enough uh, without at least one of those two guys. Right. You know what I'm saying? But um, Emerald, I know you've been keeping up with the with the finals. What's going on? Hey. What up, Em? How are you guys? I'm good. It's. I mean, I'm definitely not rooting for a Golden State, so I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, it. I was doubtful that they'd be able to play without Clay and Durant. So, I mean, the outcome is what I expected, to be honest, so. I got you, I got you. But, um, you know, really, really quick, what I, what I, I wanna know now is, uh, and I'm gonna go to you on this one first, okay. Eric. Uh, who's, who's winning the series at this point? If, if Durant doesn't come back, we'll say, and if he, if Dur all right, if Durant comes back, if Durant doesn't come back, and if Clay get, doesn't come back, how's the series going? Um, I think that, the the addition to that question is when do they come back okay because if they're not back for game four there's a good chance that toronto could win game four and be up three one mm -hmm. and then you're asking a lot for kevin durant to come and rescue you with the type of injury he has he hasn't been able to run mm -hmm. so we don't even know what type of game shape he's in yeah so if you think you're going to be down as like oh durant's just going to come back and play 40 minutes and save us it's going to be a little difficult. The yeah, guy hasn't yeah. been able to run because of the strain on his calf mm -hmm. for about five weeks now. You see, he's on the court in slippers. He's on the court in slippers. <laughs> he's living with his sneakers out there. Uh, yesterday, you know, he was trying to, uh, you know, just support the guys, and he was waiting for them in the tunnel. But yeah. he had ice on the calf yesterday, and mind he you, all he was doing looks, was just rehab work. He looks like he is still hurt. Yeah, absolutely. He doesn't look like somebody who's ready to come back. And, I mean, he's they already made the announcement he's not playing in, in game, game four. four. But he doesn't even look like he's supposed to be, you know, playing right now. Right. I'm, so. I'm going to say this. Uh, to answer the question fully, I think Golden State will win tomorrow. I think Clay will play. I think Kerr will get them 
back into their rhythm a little bit more. Because yeah. I thought he was a little out coached in game three as well. They were just too reliant on Steph, and yeah. I get it, the injuries. But I think they'll win tomorrow. I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt as the defending champs and as the best team we've seen over the last five years. Yeah. Um, and then if they win tomorrow, I do think they can win the series. If they lose tomorrow, I don't see them coming back from 3-1 against Toronto. Yeah. They can't do uh, the impossible. We'll do what the Cavs did today. Uh, I, I, I think mean, they, they did I think it against it'll be, OKC. Yeah, but it was. I think it was a little different circumstances. Yeah. I think this Toronto team, uh, and I said all along, I really like them because of their veteran leadership, and we're seeing it. Yeah, Gasol played well yesterday. Ibaka six blocks yesterday. Danny Green <laughs> continues to knock down a three pointer. He went back to his blocker. Right, <laughs> like if you look at the the contributions they're getting from their veterans, mm -hmm. not to mention Kawhi on this string of just thirty point games. Yeah, his momentum's crazy. Right, not to mention like they still haven't found an answer for Siakam. Yeah. They yeah. still don't have a guy who can consistently guard him. Mm -hmm. Toronto's just throwing too much at them. I don't see how they could come back from 3-1. Well, here's why I don't know if if Clay comes back hurt, they can do much with him because it's not like you could just be like, all right, we're just going to take Kawhi. Somebody got to still guard Siakam. So, I mean, who's going to – Iggy is hurt. He's playing hurt, and, you know, yeah. Clay is hurt. So it's going to be rough. Who's going to guard him either way, even if Clay comes back and he's not 100%? I think coming back, if, let's say they do lose, coming back and that and trying to turn around that momentum is difficult, especially coming off injuries. So I don't think they'll be able. If they don't win, they're not going to be able to come back. Yeah, I think that's, three want to be tough. tough. Even mentally, that's tough coming back from an injury, right. and you know, turning up that momentum again. It's hard. So yeah. I see. mean, <laughs> as Em said, to, to just turn that switch on is going to be tough. Mm -hmm. But we also got to remember, if they lose tomorrow night and they're down three one. We're going to look at a situation where they barely escaped game two with a victory. Yeah. And Toronto's going to be going back home. It's going to be a madhouse in Toronto, mm -hmm. knowing that they're one game away from winning it all. And Drake's going to be at that sideline. And side Drake line. is going to be as Talking. annoying as ever. Mm -hmm. And, you're, again, you're going to be now expecting, oh, just turn the switch on now. Yep. And it's, it's, a lot, it's a lot more difficult than people realize. And that realize. pressure is a whole different right. type of pressure. I mean, but on the positive side, you know, Durant, you may be two games away from just moving full-time to New York. And, you know, everyone's happy at that point, you know, except for Trip, of course. Listen, we, well, first of all, you know, I don't, I, you know, let, shout out to, to the, you know, the big homie Stephen A. Smith. He seems to think that, you know, that Kyrie is coming to Brooklyn and he's going to possibly be able to sway Durant. So we'll be good. Uh, he didn't say he was going to sway Durant. He didn't say that. Didn't you say that? completely misinterpreted oh, I, 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 everything myself? he said. I, oh. You added it in. Did I? He so did say. Own, uh, right. Scenario. I'm from Brooklyn. What it look like? Uh, I mean, uh, you know, <laughs> shout out to Stephen A. We, we talked about before how much we adore Stephen A. Smith and what he does. But he did not say he's swaying anybody to come to Brooklyn with him. Well, if he didn't, I, you, know, you know, I'll make some phone calls myself because you got to have a little bit of pull and then I can hit him up. Maybe Serena can help out. Exactly. And um, I'll, I'll get her to hook up with uh, one of her, her girlfriends or something like that. And um, <laughs> Call yeah. whoever you want. We can, yeah. going to the next. we can make it happen. He might, he might, yo, everybody want to come to Brooklyn, man. He might just want to be out here, you know, it's a different vibe in Brooklyn. He might want to just come out here and be at the Barclays Center and whatnot. Plus, think about it. If Durant and Kyrie come to Brooklyn, how crazy is the 2K tournament going to be this year? Uh, it'll be crazy. It's going to be crazy regardless. Yeah. It's going to be, be crazy, building. but that's just like next level crazy. <laughs> I mean, potentially it could I'll be. I'll have to make the call and have them come up, you know, to the to the tournament. And even if they want to play, I mean, I'll kick somebody out and, you know, give one of them the seat. Durant ain't coming finals. to the Nets, bro. Right. It's, it's, Man, it's, cool. it's, a, it's a great thought, Durant ain't coming to Is there a better to chance of him coming to the 2K tournament or him coming to the Nets? A better chance of him coming to 2K. 2K tournament. <laughs> we get him at the 2K tournament. All right, you know what? I'll take that then. I, I, I can deal with that. We, we're kind of a big deal out here, so he'll it's come true. to the 2K tournament. All right, but you I'm know with what that. I'm saying? We did have a lot, of, a lot of surprise uh, celebs just happen to randomly pop up right. in uh, yeah. last year's tournament. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see We'll see how it goes, man. But uh, <laughs> <Popping trip. laughs> but either way, we're we, we, we going to get to it in a couple of days, like you said. We, we ain't got too many games left, so. Whether it goes to Game Seven or not, we're gonna find out real soon. Mm -hmm. Where not only Durant is going, but uh, with a with a list goes on and on. Kawhi, Jimmy Butler, uh, Kyrie. What's gonna happen with Anthony Davis? Because yeah. he's still trying to be out of New Orleans. Mm -hmm. So you know, this season is gonna shake up the NBA a lot. And I think you know whether or not Durant stays for another year, or he leaves. The NBA is still gonna be shaken up a lot because of the other free agents that are gonna be on the move this year. I think it's it's. It's going to be a hectic summer, but I just find it amazing. Like, I was scrolling through the timeline yesterday, and there was pictures of Kyrie in New York, you know. Um, <laughs> and, of course, people are already making the assumptions yeah. because of the, the news coming out that he's saying he wants to play for the Nets. Yeah. But when we see the amount of movement, player movement, and we really think about it, like, look how many stars are changing teams, yeah. right? 
with LeBron going to L.A., Durant a couple years ago, Golden State, Kawhi is on a different team. Mm -hmm. Anthony Davis could potentially be on a different team. Chris Paul was traded a few years ago. Like, mm -hmm. uh, anybody who was in your top ten has probably changed teams mm -hmm. over the last four to five years. Yeah. And then now you look at the guys this summer. Again, we talked about AD, Durant's out there, Kyrie, Jimmy yeah. Butler. You know what I'm saying? The move. Right. Yeah. It, it's so much player movement. It's, it's crazy. I mean, the, the game itself is just elevating because we see how much talent is on the court. Yeah. Because people are not trying to go their entire career without getting a ring. Ring, yeah. You know, I, yeah, that's a big part of it. The great, greatest players of all time, you know, and, and happened to play in the era with Michael Jordan, and a lot of those guys didn't get rings. Yeah. And listen, if Reggie Miller had went to the Knicks or, or Patrick Ewan went to the, to the Pacers, mm -hmm. One of them, they probably could have beat the Bulls one of, one of them years with, with two of those guys. So if yeah. Barkley had, you know, went and teamed up, I mean, he, he kind of left, but that was like later later in his career. But, you know, things, things might have been different. And these guys are like, you know, we got to go up against the Warriors. Yeah. <laughs> and, and to, to win the finals, we're going to have to team up. We're going to do something. We'll never get a ring. It'll be and, like the Bulls again. And it affects your legacy so much because when LeBron didn't have one, yeah. you weren't comparing him to the greats like we were because he didn't yeah. have one and then when he made that move and got it it's like okay now he's in now the conversation now, but he's yeah. been a beast so right. the ring unfortunately like you have to make that move it's, to get it's it the validation because yeah. KD for so long he's he was one of my favorite he still is one of my favorite I don't know, players mm. but for him to make that move at first you're like damn you're stuck while you're moving but then it's like all right now he can be in those conversations because he has it so. well he he still has a little bit ways to go because He's still going to have to get one, you know, outside of Golden State before they really put him in the conversation right. yeah. with the top five all time or right. top ten all time. Right. Yeah. For him to really solidify his he spot. He went to a team that was. Yeah. And it's unfortunate because KD might be one of the most unique talents we've ever seen in the game. He is. For, for someone his size to be able yeah. to handle the ball, he can score anywhere on the court. Like, he is really indefensible. So flat, there's yeah. no yeah. There's no way you can really stop him he, unless he has an off night. Mm -hmm. Um. But for him to solidify that spot, he's going to have to kind of do it on his own mm -hmm. and get away from his team. Um, I just I find it fascinating, though, because it's a combination of guys wanting to s secure their legacy. Mm -hmm. But it's also these guys really understanding the landscape of the game. Like so many of these guys are involved with the ownership side of things. Like you mm -hmm. see, we, we get on LeBron and I've gotten on him before about sitting with the GMs and all that. But he's not the only guy who has that relationship with the GMs. He's not that only guy that wants to know what's the plan three years from now, five years from now. As they should, though. Right. And, that, and that's yeah. the beauty in it now. Yeah. The, those days of Mike and them, the reason we, you know, Mike was great in what he did, but players didn't change because they didn't care to change. It was yeah. like, I get my paycheck, I'm here, I'm good. Well, that's yeah. one thing I always resented about MJ, though. I didn't like that he wasn't as involved in just, I mean, beyond just the business side of it, just the community and all those things. And that's why I think... LeBron is so great from everything he does off the court as well. Jordan but was in like, the community. He was selling the sneakers. To <laughs> yeah, but see, I think. <laughs> but that, I, I really have always had a, I don't know. I think, I I think Mike gets a bad rap for that because we got to realize that the mindset of the game was different then. Like, yeah, that, era, so. that era, that yeah. era player, that was the real, that was the first group of guys that were able to really profit off the game. Yeah. Like, yeah. when we look at what Mike did, not only for the sneaker game, but mm -hmm. with the commercials and the endorsements. True. He changed the game. There weren't guys doing that before him. Yeah. So he was him and those other guys and Magic, obviously, who was mm -hmm. just a little before him, yeah. who really said, I want to just make this money. money. I want to be a businessman. Yeah. yeah. You know, later on, they started realizing I need to be more socially aware. Mm -hmm. I need to know yeah. what's going on in my community. Yeah. But when you get that first, you know, $20 million check and it's like, man, and, I, and I'm going to keep getting these and I'm going to keep <laughs> doing it. Like, you ain't worried about what nobody else is doing. You're trying true. to solidify yeah. your own spot. Yeah. But, but because of the way he was, that's what made LeBron feel like, I've got to take it up a notch now. Mm -hmm. yeah. i got to do it differently. That's why that group with Dwayne Wade and all of them. Like They right. made so many changes for young players to be more vocal about their contracts, to be like cognizant of their business, their, just everything. So it's been a great change in the atmosphere from, you know, the lead back in the day. Right. That's a so. fact. So. Now, Going from the, the NBA to the celebrity game, we had a we had Born for Peace yeah. uh, this past uh, weekend as well. The dunk contest went down. It was crazy. Celebs in the building. Athletes was in the building. Um, which I, what, I mean, what, what y'all think, man? Ooh, the dunk contest. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so, but we got it's real fans, real talk. Listen, so we we got to be honest. Yeah, man. I keep it real. Listen, there was some creativity out there. Yeah, and there was some guys who who, who real have some real hops, but there was a lot of missed dunks, man. And yeah. some of it was a little disappointing because you see the creativity, you see the guys trying to elevate their game. But knowing what we know, yeah. you know, inside information, I know Max was a little hurt. 
Absolutely. you know, defend the champ. So he wasn't able to really, to right? He wasn't really <laughs> able to defend his crown. Max, I know you were hurt. You, yeah. you won't make the excuse, but I know you were hurt. But he fought through it. Right, he tried to fight through it. But I, I was just a little disappointed with the amount of misses yep. and, yeah. you know, they, they was uh, some guys were very creative, other yeah. guys were kind of simplistic. Mm -hmm. So before you go, I respected though there were there were a lot of misses. I respect if you did a difficult dunk and missed. Right. But the very easy doing the same things over and over again and still missing, you know, was was hard to watch. But then the people yeah. who who made it, but it was easy. We've seen this five million times, right? right? I respected the people who did something really difficult and just missed it over people who made it, and it was super simple. So right. that's. That was just my thoughts. The only thing thought. is, is that you got to make the dunk in order to in order to win. That's you know, right. the part that sucks. But shout out to everybody in the dunk contest. We did have the champ. Uh, we got we got an interview with the champ up there who, who actually won the dunk contest. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna play that for you guys in uh, in just a second. As soon as they tell us uh, that, that it's ready in the back, and when we come back from that video, we're gonna have the the, the cast uh, come on to the set. We got we got some movie talk in a minute. So y'all let us know in the back when y'all ready, or you know if y'all if y'all. Oh, we go. Ready. We going to more. Exactly. We going. We going to keep talking. But about yeah. the finals. I mean, yeah. the whole the whole uh, the event came out amazing. I think um, you know I got to speak to so many different mm -hmm. celebs that were out there, and um, you know I I got to ask a few people how did basketball affect them in their childhood, and that was interesting to learn. Similar to my to my life, sports kept me grounded and out of trouble, so it was a beautiful event to see. It was my first time going. Absolutely. It was an so. amazing event. Shout out to Haran, another yeah. great um, event put together. I think uh, the three-point contest was nice. It was, it, was a, it was a nice addition in. Um, we got to see some of the shooters. Um, the game was entertaining as well. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, they, they were really going at it. It wasn't, they wasn't treated as no soft game. They was going yeah. at it. Shout out to Nia Rose. Nia Rose is out there. Shout out to Nia. We, we had to coach up a little bit because, you know what I'm saying, we, we saw at the open run and she was being too passive. She was trying to be too much of a point well, guard. Yeah. And then we had to, like, nah, get your shots up. Go go yeah. for yours. I agree with you. Sometimes you got to get the mamba because mentality. Because she, she seemed a little upset, like, people weren't passing her the ball. Right. Maybe it was, you know, because she's a lady. I'll give her that. But I, I was telling her on the sideline, like, take yours. Don't wait for these guys to give you opportunity. Create it. Yeah. So I think, you know, she was she was definitely trying she to She was playing too nice out there. Yeah. At the over run. At the over run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to have her at some point, and we're going to talk to her about the, mm -hmm. about the game and whatnot and so she can be back and ready for, for next year. She's actually doing some stuff, dope stuff right now because yeah. she's uh, with, with the basketball uh Beauty's yeah. uh, mm -hmm. league. She's gonna be. She's gonna be. She was actually at the Rucker on the twelfth. Uh, She'll be at the Rucker yesterday, party. and she's gonna be back on the twelfth. So we, look we need to, to make that. our parents at the Rucker. No, we are gonna be there for that because actually, because yeah. Naya and uh, Nikki um, are both uh, gonna Nikki's, be playing. Oh, wow. oh, we gonna be at the Rucker as well. So we at the Rucker. We at the Rucker. We definitely well. at the Rucker. But you know what? Y'all let us know in the back when y'all ready. Be you know, let us I know. I might be playing next. Week. How we moving? Are you Are you coming out of retirement? I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. When I was watching the game on Saturday, I was like, they need me. <laughs> Lord, nah, I really. I told uh, you to play. I could have made the phone call. You would have been. I in know. There. I don't know what I was thinking, but I love basketball. So when I was watching it, like my fingers were itching. I was ready to go. I had heels on. I'm like, what am I doing? Yeah. So I'll be out there next year. Bad. Well, listen, we appreciate that, guys. <laughs> in the back, y'all, let us know what's up. How we how we moving and grooving? You know, can we can we run that that video now? We can bring our guest out. All right, guess we're going to keep on going we're with gonna I mean, keep listen, on keep on. Keep listen, on. Let, me, let me tell you how this, and this was a surprise that a lot of people didn't know about. Uh, first of all, we had Scoop B with us. Right. Uh, that was judging. <laughs> we had Darnell from Sneaker Ball with us judging. Um, but what the people didn't know was Isaiah Washington was going to pull up. and he Isaiah was gonna, Whitehead. Excuse me. I'm bugging. Ooh, come Isaiah, on now. I'm sorry. Come on. Man. Put some Isaiah, respect on the name. I did. I did. He's from Brooklyn. He's from Brooklyn. He's from Brooklyn. But Isaiah Whitehead mm -hmm. actually came in, uh, and he judged with us. You know, that's seven things. Real fans, real talk, brand new, y'all. You know, we got to bring the stars He's, out. He literally just walked into judging. Like, he had just gotten to the gym Listen, and was like, man. yo, sit down. Sit down. Really? Yeah. yeah. Take your Like, he, he still was, like, trying to coordinate himself through his phone. And I guess, like, whoever know, like, yo, I'm here. And he was like, all right, you know, what am I doing? We out here. I'm we out done. Here. Listen, and, and that's, that's how it goes down when you rock I with I seen his fans, scores. Right? He was definitely, uh, he was giving some harsh scores as well. People yeah. came up to me after and said that we were going too hard on everyone. But I didn't think we were. I thought nah. we were First being. First of all, we weren't. And, we weren't. And, and actually. Uh, I said like, he asked me before the dunk contest started. He was like, "Yo, are we grading at hearts?" And I was like, "We giving out five hundred dollars. You damn right, we giving yeah, out hearts. Like, we some action. I ain't trying to." First of all, I mean, not only are we grading hearts, we don't believe in that whole you get a trophy just because you participated. You yeah, gotta no. earn that. We don't, we you gotta don't, earn right, that. Right, you gotta earn that joint. So, um, and then like, again, not to like damper on the champ. You know, Max last year put on a show to yeah. win it. 
Yeah. So we knew coming in, like, you're going to have to put on a show. We have more Dunkers this year. It's a bigger platform. You got to put on a show to win it. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? So we wasn't we wasn't just giving out nines and no. tens just because you put the ball through the hoop. Yeah, yeah. Right. No, that's right. Right. And Listen, I remember, the, you know, the, the last round. I mean, shout out to, excuse me, shout out to the champ, uh, right. Nico Dunks. But, you know, again, like, a lot of guys were missing Dunks, you know, and... Th that's the thing you, you can't win i don't care how great the dunk looks if you don't make it you're not going to just, to win you cannot win with the, when the lights dunk. get bright you know what i'm saying it, it gets a little tense in there yeah <laughs> and it's different when everybody's standing on the court around you and you know. you turn around and you see the judges looking at you with their scores up yeah. like and it's yeah. not like you know if, if let's say both like the, the finalists would have missed the dunk and we can and we had to score them and, and one of them would have had his highest score we could have just been like no 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 we're gonna have a dunk off it yeah. was you know it was so yeah it was we had a miss and we had to make that's right. it so there's nothing yeah. that you can do in uh in, in that situation you know but again Ball for peace was a great event shout out to everybody that came out you guys yeah. are gonna start seeing uh the Lil interviews the in, uh, in the upcoming days little mama was in the building smush parker uh, DJ was in the building. DJ, shout out to DJ Sarcastic. She, she was holding it. it down. Killing it. She really was holding it down. Yep, yo, y'all see what Real, Real Fans Real Talk is bringing y'all? My ladies was out there. Come on, that's the it. official Real Fans Real Talk DJ right there. She was killing <laughs> it that ball of a piece. Shout out to DJ G Money as well. Mm -hmm. Right. He was he was out there going back and forth with uh, with DJ Sarcastic. Uh man, just uh, Donna and uh and and, and and Alex from from Black Eight came. Shiggy pulled up. Shiggy, Shiggy pulled, pulled up. up. Young Swag was there. Commodore pulled up, but fresh out there. That's what I was uh, upset about. Yeah, yeah, I that was, was fresh out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was highly upset about that, bro. I was highly upset. How you gonna come and not bring fresh out? I'm done with y'all. And we interviewed Mr. Commodore. We didn't even get to interview yeah. fresh out. I yeah, wanted we to interview didn't. fresh out, but. I had my silky weight and I was going to throw my silky on, you know, but he... It's all good, on, man. Your hair color looks good. I appreciate yeah. that, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I appreciate <laughs> that, you know. I you do I do what I can do when I can do it, you yeah, know. Yeah, real wavy. That's, that's, that's <laughs> how, we, how we do it, over here, Lord. <laughs> But uh, listen, guys, y'all let us know what's going on in the back. We're ready to bring our guest out so they can sit down and chop it up. We got a lot of movie talk that we got to get to. So if y'all not going to bring the video, why don't we just show them the website, let them know where we rocking at, realfansrealtalk.com. Make sure you guys are following us on all social media. All right, Facebook.com forward slash Real Fans Real Talk and all of that. Make sure you, you hit us up, like the, the fan blog. page. All right, we just we just put the uh, some new blogs up today on the website. Uh, shout out to, uh, to, to to Johnny Bravo and to our intern, uh, Jalil. They both put out new blogs today. One of them on the uh, Joshua fight, the other one on the top of uh, free agents Josh, in the NBA. Josh, yeah, that fight hurt. I got, so some, I got sure, a blog coming make, out. So make sure sad. that you guys uh, work on work. hit the website up and get that. Hit us up on the gram at uh, Real Fan Talk and at uh, on Instagram and on Twitter. So make sure y'all following us there and subscribe to that YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Real Fans Real Talk. Speaking of social, you see your girl Serena making history uh, financially. Cool. First of all, wife, you always making making history. So she brought the bag home, huh? She yeah. Well, I mean, I didn't want to say nothing, but we we doing a little vacation, like okay. you know, travel tour. You know this. Uh, okay. This summer, right before the U.S. Open starts, we're gonna be back in, uh, you know, in. in Shout in the out to States Serena Williams doing it for, for the, the female athletes. She's always been my favorite. I know she's definitely your favorite. I mean, that's why people like me. So of course, this, this week there were, there was definitely a few legends that made news. Um, Jay Z becoming yeah the first uh, I guess black billionaire. I don't I don't think the first, but I think the youngest. I'm sorry, excuse me. Um, and well, Serena. He's, well, he's the first in hip hop. Right, right, right. So he's he, he is he is definitely uh, right. And the, then uh, um, the Rihanna. Face. Her net worth six hundred mil, like what? So. Yeah, listen, uh, Rihanna's out here doing her thing. I mean, we, we out here winning, man. Listen. Like I, I, I can't, I can't complain. I'm trying to get this bag sooner than y'all think. Listen, <laughs> you know, and uh, and 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 we, we, you know, we told we told you guys earlier on in the program. Uh, you know, since we had we had our situation, you know, y'all y'all know, a couple yeah. of weeks ago on the red carpet with yeah. uh, Miss Holly Berry, you know, when she had to set the tone. You know, and I, let it be known that she, you know you got to stop for the black media outlets as well. Yes. So we decided we was going going to skip out on all that and just bring the red carpet uh, straight to us, mm -hmm. and uh, you know have have the have the cast come out to uh, you know just just sit down with us and chop it up for a second because we got a couple of uh, new uh, films. Uh, shout out to to, to to my big bro yeah. uh, Jermaine Smith. He got a couple of new short films that are actually going to be released right here in the studio yes. and uh, on, on Saturday. We're coming in film on Monday. Shaq. As well. 
Yeah. Oh Another yeah. Red carpet. We are. Right, yeah. We are right with Shaft this, uh, yeah, this week too. Yeah. This week. I know. I wasn't here when you guys played the NBC clip. You played it, right? Yeah. No. So. We're gonna. We're gonna. We're gonna actually. Actually, uh, run it again. So we're gonna give you guys an update, if not today, next week about my situation with Holly Berry and mm -hmm. just how that has transitioned into more. So. That's a fact. Yeah. But uh, guys, we are here with the with the cast right now. Beautiful ladies are are with us on the set. Uh. You know, we gonna we gonna let I'm gonna let y'all introduce yourselves for I I know who y'all are because we was co-stars before and a lot of stuff and uh, they keep me in line. You know, when I when I start to get out of pocket, they these two keep me in line. See a whole uh, lot of black girl magic just sliding so. onto the set. Okay, <laughs> that's, you know that's, that's that's how it is. But but uh, <laughs> ladies, um, you know, can y'all can y'all please uh, introduce yourselves to the world? I'm gonna let y'all know which camera to uh, to look at in one second. But we gonna we gonna start over over here on the outside and, and we are gonna work our way to the inside. Go ahead. Trina. All right. I am Trina Be Real, um, also known as Liz, also known as, I'm telling you my government name. You ain't writing no checks. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Trina Be Real and Liz this, Campbell this is why we have issues. for the DNR. Yeah, this is my baby daddy. Because she don't know how to act. Oh. <laughs> so, you know, I'm here. I need to get a check. He kind of owe me some child support. Yeah. So I'm really here, undercover cop. <laughs> like undercover boss, I'm undercover baby mama coming to get a oh check. My right, right, right. Now. You know what? Yeah. <laughs> that's why you ain't going right home. Yeah. Listen. Listen. No, that, I mean, that's just my, that's my that acting. That's my the TV hat. show that I'm in. Real good. That's, that's, that's Rock Nation hats in here and stuff. All right. We're doing real good. <laughs> get it. Yeah. Nah, this, I got this, you know, from my, my God, the African spot. Don't even oh, trip. This ain't, yeah. yeah, this ain't, this ain't real. Come on. But Gene, introduce yourself. I am Jeannie Ferguson. Mm -hmm. Plus model genie F on Instagram. Okay. I play Gretchen, the sister to Miss Liz over here. Um, it's definitely something that you would want to see. There's yeah, a lot of turn up. There's a lot of a lot of sibling, not even rivalry. There's no sibling rivalry. No, I think it's, it's real life. I think I think yeah. everyone once you come out, and you see the film. Very you can relatable. definitely relay. It's something that people go through every day mm -hmm. when you know someone either from a funeral or when someone gets sick you know you have to make choices and mm -hmm. there's always you know there's always deep secrets sometimes in families that don't come out until those things happen mm -hmm. so and so you have to be a part of you you know you have to make decisions but you're not the only person or you know it's only it's more than one sibling it's more than two siblings right. so yeah. it's a bunch of you that have to make a decision and for our fans hard. that uh, don't know give a little little quick bio about what the film is about overall? The film is about um, five siblings who have these parents. So you have some that are older, some that are younger, and the older ones feel a little different about their parents. Mm -hmm. um, the younger ones are fighting to let you know that my parents were great parents. So I play a character that's somewhere in the middle of the older and the younger. Um, it's about a father who is, okay, so you have parents. The mom passed away, so now you have the dad who's actually on life support. Wow. And they don't know if they want to pull a plug or if they want to keep him alive. So now my sister over here hates mm. dad, mm -hmm. but I had a great dad. You know. Right. So you see the interaction. She does. She does. With well, well, I don't think. I don't. Well, let me just let's say this. Let's speak fair for Liz. I don't think that she hates her parents. I think when you know you have younger parents, especially parents that come from different countries. Mm -hmm. I think it's culturally clash. If we go back into like a, what I think Liz went through, um, they just didn't know how to parent. Yeah. You know, they were they, the the first two were like the trial mm -hmm. children, and then the last three were like you you've experienced it. You know how not to maybe raise your voice or how not to talk to them in that tone mm -hmm. because you've had a run through with the first two. So the last three, there's a different tone because mm -hmm. you've experienced life in a different way. Yeah. That's, that's right. a lot of a family. Yeah. That was like my family too. Exactly. Right. right. I can relate to that. I'm the youngest, I'm youngest of six. Oh, so you, so Sorry, you got, go you ahead, got all the, you got no, 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 See, this is what we talking about. Go ahead, go ahead. You're outnumbered, darling. Listen. You are, but go ahead. I like the odds. I'm good. But no, when you, you know, 
yeah, when I had my, my brother and, mm -hmm. and myself, we older, you know, eight years older than my two younger sisters, mm -hmm. you know, we was like, dang, man, they got something. Yo, we would never get this kind of stuff. Yeah, music, right. you know? Mm -hmm. right. Well, so it definitely happens, and you was on the receiving end <laughs> of that. Right. I'm the youngest of six, so my oldest brother um, is 12 years okay. difference, and everyone falls in between. So the first three, different experience, really strict parents. The last three, we're like, they're great. They, I mean, we had a little bit more freedom, but it's a, some parents get tired, right. and right. they're not. You know, my mom, think about she was like early 20s when right. she had my brother, right. Right. 30s older. with me, and now I'm 25, and my mom's 62. It's right. like, girl, and yeah, and when you come, cool. like, it's whatever. Yeah. Right. So definitely relatable film. For no, me, I'm it was different. Yeah. I was, I'm the oldest of, I'm the oldest out of 42 grandchildren. So my mother was very young very very young so i was a sibling on top of the nine so it, instead of nine children it was ten mm. so i was you understand wow. so my mother parent me different you you yeah. had to learn as you went along like you said mm -hmm. however yeah. my grandmother this is what you do with my baby mm. so it was a little i understand it's a little different so when things came about i was included Mm -hmm. Yet, I didn't want to be included because that's not my mother and that's not my father. My mother is your daughter you, True. and your sister. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So I was one of the children. I was made number 10. I'm mm -hmm. not number 10, son. I'm, I'm Nancy's daughter. Right. I'm going with this. Well, this fancy one, Nancy one, one thing I will say, um, and, and I'm actually looking forward to... Uh, to to the premiere uh, this weekend, so I can see the final cut. I, I, sometimes I get to sneak and get you know and, and watch certain things, but and I'm, I'm waiting on this one. And um, but uh, you know, Jermaine is you know a really great writer, and I'm happy that he's been able to tackle so many different uh, subjects. Because mm -hmm. I think uh, DNR is a, is a really dope concept because you know it is a familiar uh, story. Like you know, I mean. Everybody, anybody that has siblings yeah. with the, a little bit more time in between mm -hmm. kind of deals with that, you know, from both sides of the it's spectrum. Incredible. So I think that is dope. Um, if you guys are going to be here Saturday when uh, we screen the two films, you know, you're going to see some amazing projects with uh, some amazing uh, people whom I've had the pleasure to work with on, on other projects. And they're all really uh, dope actors. Plus, you know, I'm in one of them, too. And we're going right. to get to it. We're going to talk about that right. later, though, because, right. you know, I came out of retirement plug. for this. Right. I, right. Right. I did. I, it was a shameless plug. Right. But I came out of retirement for this, you know, because, you know, they, they asked me to, you know, they wanted to bring that old Bynum swag back. Okay. Got it. Okay. Got okay. it. So yeah, I said, yeah, hey, yeah. you know what? I, I, well, I, I do it, I'm glad they brought him back because, you know, it's time. It's in the checks. The daughter's got graduation. Listen. Oh, now I got fired again. I got fired, though. Oh, now you got fired. I got fired. They kicked me out. They got story. Yeah. They, they, they did. They kicked me out. Right. But um, r r really quick, ladies, um, can you guys tell everybody at home how they can reach you guys on, on social media? Okay. I am Trina, T-R-E-N-A, the letter B, real. I'm on Instagram. I'm not hiding from nobody, not even bill collectors. <laughs> so you can find me on everything, Snapchat, Twitter. <laughs> Uh, That's right, because she always on the prowl looking for people, looking Whatever, for all the dance, right. I'm on all the swag, I'm on all the, I'm all the latest, <laughs> on whatever. Everything. I'm on everything. You find me, I'm, 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 I'm ready whenever to you make it what? happen. <laughs> so tune she in every day, yes. all day. I don't even know which camera to look at because I feel like yeah, I'm looking at you. Right here, you right over here. I love it. Like, where am I? But yeah, I had a great time. I love working with Jermaine. Let me just, before we go, um, I love working with Jermaine because Jermaine is always reaching and he's making us, you know, push our craft to the next level. Exactly. Things that yeah. we wouldn't really sure. want to discuss. If, if it was a personal issue, we are able to reach and share those issues that most people don't want to talk about. He makes us go in those uncomfortable places. So I appreciate um, that as a writer and a director, you know, and, you know, he make it happen. You don't just write it and talk about it. He actually put it. You know, you get to see awesome. us on Saturday. I'm so excited. Yeah, that's the thing. It's all about completion. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, I am Jeannie Ferguson. That's a hashtag. You can follow that as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm plus mod, P-L-U-S-M-O-D. Jeannie, that's J-E-A-N-N-I-E. Please, not G-E-N-I-E. Plus my Jeannie F on Instagram, <laughs> Jeannie Ferguson on Facebook, Jeannie Ferguson on Twitter. Wherever you want to find me, I'm Jeannie Ferguson. I ain't running and hiding either. And I don't have a private page. Feel free to look. Yeah, I'm I I I private mine too. I see you watching. I do. And don't be all up in their DMs though either. She oh, said no, you said, can come in my DMs. Oh, so you, so you well, no, that? I'm not a serial data. I am taken. <laughs> 
So I'm a serial clear. dater, son. I'm I am married. And everybody Yo, knows. And I am not a serial right, dater. You know what? That is a new term. I learned Don't about that. Penis. And we do yeah. talk about that. That is a and new thing now. Hurt. There is, you know, <laughs> so do not DM good. me unless you talk about checks that are coming yeah. with my oh, name my on it. Then we can discuss that. Uh, am I correct, sis? Over there, period. yeah. And period, yeah. Left city with girl. Period, okay. period with the T. Okay. T T T <laughs> with the T T T. I gotta got tell, tell y'all this. And T on the side with the T peppermint T. I, I, I love uh, yeah. Trina so much. Uh, we we, we co-starred in in uh, in Bismarck, which is. Um, um, and but the funniest you know thing that we were in together was the behind the scenes going back and forth at the office well yeah. <coughs> that had to be the funniest yeah well you know you know I do what I do. I'm not only an actor, I'm a stand-up comedian. I just can't do oh those local goodness. circuits because I can't go home and I can't go home and do it for free. So if y'all got a show for me and you want a couple of dollars to make me holler, 15 minutes is all you, you know need, what? darling. Listen, Holla. Can y'all do me a favor in the back, please? I'm here for it, darling. <laughs> I'm gonna yell it. Could y'all pull up the website one more time for the Trina people Trina, be real. Home? You can Google me, baby. I'm so Google. That, uh, so they can yes. know where to go. Uh, RealFansRealTalk.com. We're going to swap out and bring a couple of, of, of new cast members onto the yeah. set in just one second. But uh, make sure you guys hit up the website. We just uh, put up two new blogs. From, uh, one from Jay Bravo and uh, one from my intern, Jaleel. So make sure you check those out. And make sure you are, are uh, following us on Instagram and Twitter, at Real Fan Talk. All right. And um, subscribe to that YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash for the fans productions. We got a couple of interviews that will be dropping soon that will be going exclusively to IGTV as well. Mm -hmm. So make sure you guys are subscribed to, uh, to everything. And, um, and when we come back... We are going to have two new members of the cast. It's a big cast. The, yes. the, the, the whole the whole cast uh, came out. So yeah. so we gonna we gonna swap them out right now for you guys. And um, but make sure again, make sure you guys are checking out the uh, the website. It's realfansrealtalk.com. We just dropped a whole bunch of new material, new articles on the site. Um, and of course, we got the we got the Smush Parker interview coming up. Mm -hmm. We got uh, we got Nye Rose interview coming up as 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 well. Um. But um, you know, we go we we're gonna rock out, man, in just a second. Do we have one of the videos ready yet, Cliff, or what are we doing with that? Okay, we just gonna rock out with it. We're gonna go right uh, right along with it. And um and, and, and we we back, man. Y'all can bring us back right now. You know, we got two more of the of the cast members uh with us as 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 well. But um so y'all let me know what y'all wanna do. We gonna play that right now or we gonna rock out. I think we should just rock out with the cast because we All got so some let more it go coming ahead. on. Yeah. And definitely check out the Instagram to check out the videos. How are you? How did it feel to be out there? I'm good. I can't complain. You know, I woke up today, so I mean, as long as I do that, I'm straight. So let me tell you, I love your dunks. I know you had some good difficulties at the end, but you chose a very difficult dunk. How hard was that dunk trying to execute that? This is the sad part. It wasn't necessarily hard. It was, I should have had someone taller in front, but to execute it, it, it just, it takes more repetition. I got to get more in the gym more. But I mean, if y'all didn't know I'm from Cali, and that's Cali style, we're not going to go ahead and win a dunk on some... <laughs> little reverse. We're gonna go ahead and go big or go big or go home. I may not have won, but I'm leaving here with some respect. And that's all I really want. Honestly, I was one of the judges, as you know, and I think we really did respect the fact that you chose a difficult dunk. So and it represent the West Coast. So we definitely took that into consideration. Even some of the people who missed they missed on a less challenging, or, they, or rather they made it on an easier dunk, but you missed on a challenging one, so that's definitely respectable. Sure, sure. Alright, so how do you feel about being a part of this uh, event that gives back to the community? Bless. My mom from Brooklyn, uh, so being from the West Coast but still having roots out here in the East, it made me like, okay, there's a dunk contest, but I actually want to help and help fall for peace, help bring peace to the community. If we could do that anywhere around the world, I feel like it's a good look. So for me to be a part of it, I just feel blessed, honestly. Well, thank you so much. Continue to use your talent to give back to the youth. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Smush Parker here, formerly up to the Los Angeles Lakers, and you are now tuned in to Real Fans Real Talk. Real fans, real talk.com. The author, Domus, Chip Young, and Intern Tom. All the cast members on the set, y'all gonna see them in just a second. But before we, we show y'all the cast members, I just wanna let y'all know one more time. We're gonna be premiering those two movies uh, this Saturday. It's going down right here, man. We, you know, we, 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 we opening up the whole man, the house, and uh, we bringing the, the cast out, we bringing the crew out. It's gonna be a nice little panel discussion in between films. 
And everybody gonna be out here, man. Probably gonna be might be some food out here. Is. I gotta check the budget first before I make that announcement. They are gonna have food <laughs> and stuff. So don't quote me on that just yet. But they might have some food and some drinks. Maybe depending on what kind of fit. That's why I like Beyonce's music video because she got like everything there. She got like catering from like <laughs> five star restaurants. You know, I, when I did the video, you know the best thing I never had did the Beyonce video. Oh, I was my in that goodness. video. So in other words, we are trying to come um, Netflix and chill. Pull up. First of all, who trying to Netflix and chill? What are you talking about? <laughs> first of all, listen, okay. Serena don't let me out like oh that, my so goodness. I don't even be playing myself and you know disrespecting myself like that. But um, that's why I'm, I'm here doing what I do. But uh, we got the cast. I'm sorry, y'all. We got the cast members with us, ladies. We're gonna start on this side again. <laughs> Could you please introduce yourselves? Absolutely. My name is Darlene Elizabeth Joyner. I'm portraying Desiree and DNR. And I am Stacy Monique, and I'm playing Karen in DNR. Jarvis, Janelle Marie Jarvis, and I am playing Pat in DNR. Okay. And this is Emerald Marie uh, <laughs> Baker's right here. So I had the two Marie's up and I spit out of it. I'm with you. <laughs> what? <laughs> but, uh, ladies, go ahead, tell, me, tell me a little bit about y'all characters. We know we'll start on this side this time. Okay. So, Pat is the person in the family. Well, I shouldn't let me start. Let me start over. I'm Gretchen's girlfriend. Um, and I am the person that's not part of the family that does a lot of work. Mm -hmm. That person that does everything, that steps up, that's supported, um, that, you know, doesn't get the recognition. Because, you know, sometimes the people that work the hardest, we forget about. Um, so that's her character. That's what ends up happening with her. And Pet family doesn't like her too much. <laughs> and on this side? I'm Karen. I am, I guess I'm in the middle. I'm the middle sister. And um, I am... A God-fearing, God-loving woman. Um, and I try to bring reason to the family. That's what I try to do. I try to bring reason because, you know, um, Liz, the older sister, you know, she, she just has her issues. So I'm the reasoning sister. You know, I, I want to keep peace in the family. Mm -hmm. That's what I do. Mm -hmm. And my character, Desiree, um, she married into the family. She's married to William. And, of course, she's outside again. But, again, she's bringing reason. She's trying to get the family to understand what would be best for dad. You know, um, sometimes prolonged life is not necessarily a good thing. And she forces them to confront that reality. Okay. Is this the, uh, the first project that you guys have been in? or With Jermaine, yes. Okay. This is my first project. Me too. Mm -hmm. No, this is my second time. <laughs> this is my second time working with Jermaine. Um, he's a great, great writer. Um, when I read the script for this, um, and he told me he was writing something, and he was like, yeah, I got an idea. I think I'm going to write it. He was like, um, you know, I got an idea for a character for you. I was like, okay, cool. And it's like the next day he called me, and he was like, oh, yeah, I got the script together. I'm like, damn, that fast? Mm -hmm. I'm like, already? But... It really hits home because this is something that all families uh, might have to go through if they haven't dealt with already. They might have to go through that in life, dealing mm -hmm. with a, you know, a sick family member. Yeah. What should you do? You know, as far as do you want them to be resuscitated or not? Mm -hmm. You know, that's an important issue. So I think the script was well written. Right. Phenomenal. So you guys all kind of spoke about how it's relatable. What is the, if any, ultimate message you want viewers to take from it? Um, basically, you know, families fight, families go through, ev go through things, um, but you have to, you have to band together yes. and stay strong, you know what I'm saying? Regardless of what issues or, or what obstacles come in your way, you know, you're still family mm -hmm. and you still have to find a way to, you know, to, to hold each other down. Mm -hmm. Also, we need to make our, like, wishes known, what do we want? you know, as far as end of life care, yes. you know, mm -hmm. I'm a nurse, you know, and I have, you know, I have a hard time having this conversation, not with my patients, but my family too, because I want my mother and father to be around forever. Yeah. I don't want to talk to them about DNRs and, you know, um, healthcare okay. proxies, it's, you know, it's not a fun so topic. True. And that's, I think that's really important, especially in the black community where we don't discuss a lot of these things, like a will, I know my <coughs> uncle had passed away, and it was mayhem trying to figure out, because he had no kids, 
um, just like where things went and it was you know the emotions are high when you lose someone but now trying to figure out in a big family who gets what especially when they have assets and they have cars and houses and whatever so it's I think um, this film will kind of make people think about that and have a plan set in place you know to your point yeah, it's crazy because a lot of the, you know people don't even have insurance. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, life insurance. People don't have regular health insurance and is life insurance true. is just like, what's that? I yeah, mean, mm -hmm. it's crazy. It's true. It's so. I, I, it's funny. I had a conversation with a relative, like a really close relative of mine, and when I found out that she didn't have life insurance, I was like, what? Mm -hmm. I was like, I don't have life insurance. I was like, yeah. oh, but there's oh my God. a lot of people that don't have life insurance. And it's really important that. It starts at a young age. I'm a teacher, um, and I've been in education for about maybe 15 years. Mm -hmm. And I have a, my little cousin asks me, she goes, what? she's like, what's life insurance? And I explained it to her. She's five. She's not going to get it completely. But it's important that she knows because that little seed, now she won't be one of those people that don't have it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so no matter, even if you think a child is too young to explain certain things, life situations, you still should do it because they need to understand it. At least that way they'll have more time to grasp it. So. Right. Yeah, that's awesome. It's definitely, definitely a fact. And, and once again, uh, DNR man, this, it's, it, it's such a, it's such a crazy topic. Because have you did, during the movie, did you guys think about if you were in that situation, what you would would do? Like, I, I definitely did, especially because I wasn't part of the family. So there's so many of us who marry into or have relationships with people and their family are going through it. Mm -hmm. And then the partner is the rock for their partner, the person, mm -hmm. yeah. and is the rock for their family. And they really can't feel the feeling. There's a scene in, in the movie, I won't talk too much to it, but they do make a decision. And I'm not involved. Now that feeling is real, you know, yeah. because people... The workhorses, like I mentioned, sometimes don't get that love. And, but no matter what you do it, because you love the family. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it, it, I think it's really important because it's, to me personally, because I actually am that workhorse. Mm -hmm. So I made that connection, you know, with Pat. But you, your character kind of represents a lot because sometimes it takes someone that's not directly mm -hmm. in the family to take the emotions out to make the proper decision yeah. sometimes. So mm -hmm. it kind of takes away from, you know, the emotions. Of yeah. Right. So that's your character is, is uh, represents a very important role in many families. Yeah. And staying focused, because if I was in my emotions, then mm -hmm. I wouldn't have been able to do it because, yep. like I said, you know, I'm not the most favorite, the favorite one. Right. <laughs> right. No, absolutely. Definitely. And I think I would, I think it's also important that, you know, families are also discussing the options with the doctors too, because, you know, you really need to know, like, is my loved one really going to have a really good quality of life after we do all this, you know, and yeah. try to put yourself in the patient and your mom and your dad's mm -hmm. shoes too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, would, would they want to live, you know, in that, in that condition? But uh, again, it's a conversation that needs to be had, yeah. you know, prior to getting to that point, And we yeah. don't really talk about that, mm -hmm. you know, so it, it is something that we should think about. And, I, and that's one thing I'm um, happy about with the film is that it's going to make you think, you mm -hmm. know what? My, my mom, my grandmother, they getting older. And what, you know, what, what would happen if something like this happens where, you know, because if we're talking about, usually it'll be the matriarch or the patriarch of, mm -hmm. of the family that's most likely going to be uh, affected by this, but we don't have these conversations. So we should actually start. And it's not only older people, you know, how many of us have it? That's because right. at any moment, mm -hmm. you know, that's what happens. No matter how much love a family has, when it comes down to certain things, you know, it kind of tears people apart. Yeah. Yeah. So at any age, you know, you should figure out what it is that you want to happen with anything. And it's touching and it's stressful, but it's really, really important. Yeah. That's okay. a fact. And I just want to, I just want to let you guys um, at home know. So we got we still we still got a whole lot to get to. We have, we're gonna do something special today. We're gonna go into overtime because we got the director and the writer uh, here as well today. So we we going overtime today, and uh, we we got some talking to do. But we're gonna stick with the with the ladies uh, for for a little while. Oh, really quick, um, ladies, could you guys give the uh, the the IG um, for for the film and and your personal IGs as well? Okay, I'm not sure about the IG for the film. We'll get that. It's we'll get deep. that. Yeah, we'll get that. You know what? We're going to get that. I, those are just jokes, y'all. So I <laughs> you know, get, your, get your personal IG out, man, or your Twitter, or whatever you want to give out so they know. Okay. All right. Um, find me on Facebook. My name is Darlene Elizabeth Joyner. Um, IG, very long, but bear with me. Darlene.Elizabeth.Joyner, <laughs> J-O-I-N-E-R. All right. <laughs> dot, 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 Underscore, underscore. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, I am on Instagram, Stacey Monique One, 
and on Facebook, Stacy Monique, and on Twitter, Stacy Monique. So there's no Stacy Monique too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jay Jarvis on Instagram, Miss Jay Jarvis on Instagram, Jay Jarvis on Facebook, and Janelle Marie Speaks and Janelle Marie Accessories. All right, y'all got y'all got the, y'all got the IG. I should be following them already. If you're not following them, yes, let me ask That's you guys. Right. So, did you guys all know each other, other ladies, before uh, shooting this? Or no, I met a, I met a few of the ladies mm-hmm. and Jermaine. Um, reading another one of Jermaine's works, like um, in January. Mm-hmm. But I met most of the actors through like um, their Facebook profiles, so okay. their faces were all familiar to me. And was it hard or easy to create that chemistry? Because granted, you have to play sisters. So I have four, you know, there's four girls in my family. So the bond that we have is something that is natural. Was it hard to kind of create that and convey that on screen with all these women that you don't know? How hard or easy was that? Well, I think once you kind of know yourself, you know, it's kind of easy to like build that chemistry too. I don't know if you. um, Yeah, I didn't. I didn't. um, I met some of the other ladies briefly, um, but. I thought it was great um, because me and me and Trina have a scene. We met each other briefly, mm-hmm. and we you know we have a scene in the movie that's kind of powerful. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just, you know, I guess I just put, you know, poured myself into it, yeah. and put myself in that that character's mind frame is how would I handle this? How would I be? What would I be going through? Yeah. So I think we all had great chemistry That's awesome. yeah. <laughs> in this film. I think we all had great chemistry. I really do. My, my story is a little different. I met, I've never worked with him before mm-hmm. in this capacity. And um, I was like, please give me a chance. Like, please, like I really like, please. Um, and that's kind of what happened. But I'm actually the girlfriend of my friend of 20 years, so that was very interesting. Um, Because it's like, um, I don't want to, you know, like, all right. But but when you take yourself out of that, of course, um, it it was a it was a lot of fun because you know life is about growth and challenging Mm -hmm. challenges, and if you can't do it, then what's the point? So you just keep pushing yourself, and it was it was really really great. Yeah, yeah. I commend you because it's important to see a group of women be able to work together. Because you know we have our stigmas, Mm -hmm. black women, atmosphere sometimes, attention. It's just I don't even believe that anymore because I've had such great like women empowerment experiences. So Mm -hmm. I had to note that and you know make other young women are watching know that you can work well with other oh, yeah. you know black women in in a space that you know there's room for all of us so oh yeah right you know what that and that's one thing and i'm sorry i i gotta say about jermaine is that he gives a lot of people shots mm-hmm. yes, he does. um yeah. he does a lot of projects so it's you know there's a lot lot to go around <laughs> you know and that's one thing he's trying to share it. he's not trying to have it all for himself he's trying to share it with, with with others that have a dream and they have goals and he's giving them opportunity so you know shout out to jermaine uh, for that, yeah. um, but uh, really quick, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get into a quick final thought, and then we're gonna come back uh, for for a little bonus uh, time with uh, with with Jermaine, uh, mm-hmm. who who directed uh, uh, DNR and wrote uh, Do Right by Yours, and and my co-star uh, as well. And the film is gonna be out here with us, so we're gonna have a little bit of fun in, in just a minute. But uh, ladies, uh, one more time, y- y'all can just give us a final thought. Or just go watch the movie. (laughs) Please, make sure when it comes out, you watch the movie. um, And come check us out on Saturday. We're going to be here on Saturday, 3 to 7. Got to come out and support. That's a free event. I mean, can't go wrong with free. Please. (laughs) Come Wait, on. I've sold like 20 tickets. Don't say that on the <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess uh, my final thought would be it's really, really important to do what's uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Um, because the greatest joy and the greatest reward mm-hmm. usually comes with some type of conflict. So yeah. that's really important. All right. That's well, real. Yes. Well, listen, for myself, Trip Young, my co host, Emma Marie, and our Legend of Two Games, the cast yes. of, uh, uh, of DNR, yeah. we will see you guys next week. And uh, get ready for this uh, bonus time, guys. Higher expectations. Young and intern time for the white and black fans. Asia to Manhattan. I get all my facts from my bro, Mark the Stats, man. If you're not tuned in, I recommend the CAT scan. Uh-huh. And if your brain checks out, then you deserve a backhand. Sports, 
gossip, all our hot topics. Hey, hey. Real fans, real talk.com got it. Uh, they got uh, the hottest bloggers. Did Jeremy Lynn hurt? We'll log on to the site and you can hear it from them first. Uh, I'm talking about the latest. Yeah, I'm talking yeah. about the greatest. Yeah, yeah. Go check out the archives. Even tell a neighbor. Tell her Bobby sent ya. From spring to winter. Tuning in should be the only thing on your agenda. <laughs> Certified co-sign. You know what I'm about, son. Real fans, real talk.com. I'm out one. Real fans, real talk, real fans, real talk, real fans, real talk.com, real fans, real talk.com, real fans, real talk, real fans, real talk, real fans, real talk.com, real fans.